In this video, we're going to start to look at domain and range. Uh, domain and range is typically a topic that students uh, struggle with, uh, so hopefully this video will provide a little bit of help to you. Um, remember that domain is the uh, collection of all the possible x values for a function. So some people call those the input values, uh, same thing as the x values. The range, if you recall, are all the output values, all the legal outputs. So those are the y values. So when we talk about domain, we're only wanting to talk about x values. When we talk about range, it's only the y values we're considering. Um, I can't stress this enough. Uh, the easiest way to determine the domain range is actually to graph the function. So whether you're given the graph, oh, that's great. If you're not given the graph, you're given the equation for it. Graph the function. That will make you the finding of domain and range a whole lot easier, I think. Also, when you're looking at the graph, you want to pay attention to things like locator points. You want to think about what the arrows on the graph are doing. Now, a calculator won't give you arrows, but you've worked with functions long enough to know, I think, uh, can determine where the arrows are. Speaking of arrows, here's a function that doesn't have any arrows. Um, this is the graph of a discrete function. Basically what that means is it looks like a scatter plot. Uh, it's not connected, which means it's not continuous. Uh, so the values of this graph, they just take on uh, just certain values. So there's, for instance, in here, um, if you come over to 1, there is no y value associated with 1. Um, so in order to have a value associated with it, there has to be a dot there. Um, so uh, this scatter plot here, uh, if I wanted to find out the domain and range for it, first thing I would do would be to make a table. So my table is just a collection of x and y values for each of those dots. There's one at negative 4, 3. There's one at 0, 0. 3, negative 4. 6, 2. And 7, 1. So the domain of this function is just the collection of all the x-coordinates of the dots. So this is by far the easiest uh, graph to come up with a domain for because all you have to do in curly braces, I'm not very good at drawing those, but is to list the, all the x-values. So what I highlighted in yellow, that's the domain of this uh, discrete uh, function. Negative 4, 0, 3, 6, and seven. That's the domain. The range is very similar. You just want to look at the y values. So if I go to my table of values again, these y values that I highlighted are the, those are the y coordinates each of the dots. That's also the range. So again, the range, you just put them in the curly braces. 3, 0, negative 4, 2, and 1. Now you can put them in increasing or decreasing order. You can just list them in the order that they occur in. It doesn't really matter as long as you get them all. Let's move on to a more difficult type of function. This is a line segment. So this graph is called continuous because I guess the easiest way to think about it is if you start at this dot and move along the line, you can draw that uh, line segment without picking up your pen or pencil. Um, Basically, that means that this function takes on all of the y values between the x values of negative 2 and 4. Um, so as you move along the x to the, from left from negative 2 to 4, from left to right, this particular line segment moves up through the y values from negative 3 to 1. So I've got those. You now this is the first graph we've seen with locator points. So the left-handed locator points negative 2, negative 3, the right-hand one's 4, 1. And notice I've labeled those x's and y's because it's going to be important. Um, sometimes graphs won't label those locator points for you, so um, if you're working with one of these, the first thing I would do would be to write down uh, those locator points labeled with x's and y's. So I have a negative 2, a negative 3, and a y. And then the next one, a 4 and a 1. So since this graph is continuous between those two points, the domain is all the x values between negative 2 and 4. So if I wanted to write that, there's a couple ways I can write this. I can write it with uh, inequalities. I would write negative 2 is less than or equal to x. Remember, the domain is x values. 
which is less than or equal to 4. So that's written as an inequality. If I wanted to write it as an interval, the inter interval notation takes advantage of parentheses and brackets. So the parentheses would mean that these dots were open. Uh, but since they're closed, that means they're equal to, they're included in the domain, we're going to use bra or, uh, brackets on those. So to write this inequality with interval notation, you would write negative 2, comma, 4, both of them inside brackets because both of them are closed dots. So in a similar way, the range, so let's back up for just a second. When we consider domain, we're moving across because x values move across. When we think about the range, we're looking at up and down movement because those are y values. So on this graph, the range um, takes on, or the y values take on all the values between negative 3 and y equals 1. So I would just write, it's a very similar way to write the domain except I would use the y coordinates. So it goes from a negative 3 and I'm less than or equal to again because it's got the closed dots. Instead of putting an X, I want to put a Y because I'm dealing with range and it's less than or equal to the greatest Y value which would be 1. To write this as an interval you would write negative 3 comma 1. So notice that since the points are closed uh, circles, we're going to, again, we're going to use uh, the equal to inequality symbols and brackets um, for the interval notation.